Defense Ministry has given the green signal to upgrade the Neoma airfield in eastern Ladakh into a full-fledged operating base from where fighter aircraft will be able to operate. As per reports, the construction work will start soon to expand the runway for fighter jets to take off and land. But why a new fighter base? Don't we already have two fighter bases at Leh and Thois in Ladakh? And what's the significance of this new airbase close to the LSE? In this video, we'll discuss all this in the context of 2020 India-China border conflict and a detailed discussion on the points of conflict like Pangongso and Galwan along the LSE in Eastern Ladakh. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to the ARC. So where exactly is Neoma? The Neoma airfield lies southeast of Leh at an altitude of 13,700 feet and it's barely 40 km away from the LSE with China. After the Defence Ministry's clearance, the airfield upgradation will start soon with runway expansion and construction of other necessary infrastructure. As per reports, it will be ready in around a year from now. Currently, only smaller transport aircraft like the C-130J and helicopters can operate from here. Once the new runway is constructed, bigger transport aircraft like C-17 and fighter jets will be able to operate from Neoma. The fighter jets that will operate from here, however, will need some modifications. As at such high altitudes, air density reduces and that affects the jet engine performance. So the engines will need a little tweaking to operate from here. But the mood question is, what prompted this decision? Building a fighter-ready base at an altitude of 13,700 feet is no easy task. But the developments on the other side of the LSE compelled India to take this decision. India has two bases at Leh and Thois in Ladakh from where fighters can operate and three ALGs at Dolodbe Goldi, Nyoma and Fukche close to the LSE. Now if you look at the other side of the LSE, this is how it looks. In the past few years, China has built and expanded its air bases and airfields at a rapid pace. China has upgraded its bases along the LSE with longer runways and hardened shelters and deployment of SAMs among others. It has also created new heliports, including one at Tian Shui Hai, which is near the Galwan Valley, and the other in Rutok County, which is near the Pangongso Lake. I have mentioned the altitude against each airfield because altitude plays a vital role in fighter operations. As you can see, except Hotan and Kashgar, all other airfields on their side are at an altitude more than 12,000 feet. Fighter jet operation gets severely restricted with altitude. Its payload capacity, performance, everything suffers at high altitude. And we are lucky in that aspect because on this side of the Himalayas, we have lower altitudes as compared to the Chinese. And that's why the Chinese are trying to compensate this limitation with numbers. China building new airfields and upgrading the existing ones dangerously close to the LSE leaves us with no choice but to keep pace. An airbase close to the LSE also comes with its challenges. Being 50-60 km from the LSE means it comes under the direct line of attack of artillery. But at the same time, it can prove to be a game changer in case of a conflict because within minutes, the fighters will be in the sky taking on the adversary, saving valuable time. Apart from being 40 km from the LSE, Nyoma is only 60 km from Pangongso 90 km from Demchok and oddly 40 km from Chusul and Spangur Gap. Have you heard of these names before? I think you might have. So let's dive straight into the India-China border conflict. India shares a 3,488 km long border with China, which was earlier India-Tibet border before China's annexation of Tibet. It is divided into three parts. The western sector lies in Ladakh, middle sector in Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand, and the eastern sector in Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. The middle sector is the least disputed one. On the eastern sector, it follows the McMahon line that China doesn't recognize. I have discussed the history of this border in my video on Arunachal Pradesh. Do check it out. The rest of the border is called the line of actual control. As you can see, China occupies the Aksai Chin region on this part. Contrary to popular belief, most of the Aksai Chin region was lost much before the 1962 war with China. A significant part of the 3,488 km long border with China is disputed and barring a few patrolling points and distinct geographical features, a large part of the LSE, especially in eastern Ladakh, is ambiguous. The terrain here is mountainous and weather is inhospitable. 
Earlier there was no road connectivity till the border areas which is why for the most part the LSE here remained unguarded and that caused frequent disputes and standoffs Post the 1962 war India and China signed multiple agreements in 1993 96 2005 and 2013 to maintain peace on the border Both sides agreed to restrict military presence in the region as per the 1993 border agreement and later the 1996 agreement restricted the use of firearms while patrolling. Patrol points were marked where both sides patrolled and in case of a disagreement during patrolling there were SOPs that both sides followed to de-escalate tensions. There have been multiple instances of incursions by the Chinese in the recent past. Depsang in 2013, Chumar Demchok in 2014, Botse in 2015. The first major clash in recent times in this region happened in 2017 when soldiers from both sides clashed near the Finger Four area of the Pangong So Lake. Now let's try to understand why did this clash happen. Take a look at the geography of the Pangong So Lake area. The F1 through F8 are called the finger areas because of their resemblance to fingers in hands. As you can see, the perception of LSE between the two sides differs greatly in this area. In the Pangong So region, India has a base near the F3 and earlier Indian soldiers used to patrol up to F8 but not frequently. Similarly, Chinese soldiers too patrol till F2. But sometime in August 2017, Indian soldiers were stopped by the Chinese soldiers to patrol near the F4 area and then a clash ensued. China then started building military infrastructure on its side and also increased its presence in the region. The very same F4 area became the reason for clash again in April 2020. This time it was too violent, resulting in critical injuries on both sides. As the standoff continued, the Chinese side fortified the entire F4 to F8 area with new camps, surveillance equipment, and also fielded weapon systems. The Indian side too reinforced its bases with troops and equipment. What started in Pangong So quickly spread across the entire LAC on the western sector. Troops built up started all across the LAC, and things started to hit up at known conflict points at Depsang, Galwan Valley, Hot Springs, and Pangong So. But what really motivated China's aggression all of a sudden? It was in response to India's infrastructure development near the LSE in Ladakh. On their side of the LSE in Tibet, the Chinese have built massive infrastructure, starting from roads, bridges, and even railways. Access to their posts near the LSE became easier as a result. But China always opposed India building infrastructure closer to the LSE. And India too was sensitive towards that concern for a very long time. but that changed recently this road is an example it's called the dsdbo road this route called the winter route was used by the trading caravans during winter as the water in the shok river would freeze they traded between leh and yarkand in xinjiang india decided to build this 255 km road connecting darbuk shok and dolat bay goldi which is called sub sector north around the year 2000 but the construction could not be finished as the road's alignment was along the banks of the shok river which used to flood in the summers damaging the road the road's alignment was then changed and construction work completed in 2019 you can see the road runs parallel to the lac but this 255 km strategic road passing through one of the most treacherous terrains at an altitude ranging from 14000 feet going up to 16000 feet was not easy to build around 37 bridges were built across various snow fed rivers that now provides all weather connectivity to dbo that sits just below the karakoram pass so hats off to the border roads organization for this herculean effort the road boosted indian army's ability to quickly deploy troops and equipment along this stretch and dominate the lac which was not possible earlier as you can see the road passes very close to the galwan valley and that rang alarm bells on the chinese side The conflict at Galwan Valley is relatively new.
The LSE, as you can see, runs east to the confluence of Galwan and Shok River. Earlier, the Chinese had no presence in the region, and their nearest main base at Hawaitan lies around 48 km northeast. Both the Indian and Chinese side patrolled this area. But sometime in 2016, the PLA built a road up till the middle of the Galwan Valley. Considering the Indian advantage due to the DSDBO road, the Chinese decided to push the LSE further west. Then in 2020, they set up smaller bases closer to the LSE and decided to stop Indian patrols at Patrol Point 14, which is on the Indian side but very close to the LSE. To resolve the conflict at Pangongso F4, PP14, and also near the Depsang Plains, local commanders level and brigadier level talks between both the sides started. India demanded status quo ante to be restored. but the chinese remained adamant finally after 2 months the lieutenant general level meeting took place to resolve the conflict in the meeting troop withdrawal from conflict areas and creation of buffer zones were decided then on the fateful night of june 15th a violent clash erupted in galwan valley area where colonel santosh babu and his troops went to check the dismantling of the post at pp14 as per the agreement in the lieutenant general meeting In the violent clash, 20 Indian soldiers, including the CEO, lost their lives in the line of duty. Chinese casualties have not been officially confirmed, but the numbers from the unofficial sources peg it at more than 35. After the June 15th incident, more meetings took place, and both sides agreed on disengagement. from contentious areas troops were withdrawn from these areas but aggressive posturing continued with tanks howitzers artillery sam and surveillance systems being moved near the lc the chinese side deployed their j11 j20 fighter aircraft and other air assets operating from hotan angari kunsa and other forward bases the indian air force too deployed its su30 mig 29 and rafale fighter jets and apache and lch attack helicopters continuously patrolling the skies of ladakh as per a recent report the indian air force airlifted more than 68000 army troops and heavy military equipment like tanks artillery guns and bmps weighing over 9000 tons supporting the army in eastern ladakh since the india china military standoff started along the lac in 2020 At this point, around 50 to 60,000 troops remain deployed on both sides of the India-China border, and the border talks are still ongoing. The most recent one was the 19th round talks held on 13th and 14th August 2023, and released a joint statement agreeing to resolve the border issues in a speedy manner. In the meanwhile, border infrastructure on our side is being ramped up with roads, bridges, tunnels. and other military infrastructure being built and neoma lg upgradation is part of that project so don't get surprised when a su30 or rafale takes off near the lsc very soon the diplomatic and military efforts to resolve the border standoff are going on but we need to ramp up our border infrastructure rapidly because remember we are still playing catch up with the chinese Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon with a new video. Thank you.